Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the geometric transformation which is rotation about a given complex point. Let's be given three complex points, three points, A, B, and C, represented by complex numbers, represent them by complex numbers, A, B, and C. Beautiful. Okay. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to figure out a formula. So here's my A, here's my B, and then here's my C, like so, right? Those are my points. And I want to choose my A as the origin and then rotate B to the point C. So C is the rotation of B by an angle theta about A. That's the problem we want to address. And so let's think about a simpler version of this, right? So for example, if I give you a complex number Z, so here's the real axis, and then here's the imaginary axis, and I give you a complex number over here, z. If I multiply z by e to the i theta, what happens to that? So if I look at z getting mapped to e to the i theta times z, what effect does this have? Well, if I put z in polar coordinates, e to the i argument of z, like that, and then I send that to e to the i theta times r e to the i argument of z, this just becomes what? This is exactly equal to r e to the i and then arg z plus theta, right? In other words, I am shifting the argument by theta radians clockwise, counterclockwise, right? So this is just a rotation. This is just a rotation over here. And so I'm just going to rotate this to this point over here, if that's the angle theta, then this is going to be e to the i theta times z, where I'm along a circle, right? Because they have the same modulus over here. Beautiful. And so now what I want to do is the following. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put myself into this configuration over here by subtracting off a, right? So subtracting off a, subtract, subtract a from b and c, to form b prime and c prime, with a now being moved to the origin, with a, a prime equals zero, okay? So that's the idea of how we're going to find this formula over here, so let's take a look at this idea. So when I do that, what are we going to have? When we do this, we're going to have just a straight complex plane, i r, and then over here just r, and now over here, we're going to have my b prime, and then over here, we're going to have our c prime over here, and if I want to rotate this by theta, by theta radians, by theta radians, we know exactly how to do that, right? We know that b prime, by this argument over here, so b prime, b prime, times e to the i theta is equal to c prime over here. Beautiful, that's our formula just from this idea, but now I've subtracted a from both c prime, so this really is really b minus a, e to the i theta, is equal to c minus a, and we have our formula now. So what does our formula succinctly say? So if I rewrite this expression over here, so if we re rewrite that expression, what are we going to see? We're going to see the formula for this c over here is that c is equal to what? Is equal to a plus b minus a e to the i theta. In other words, we're, we're taking the point b and shifting the origin back over to a and then rotating by an angle of theta over here. So that's going to be our formula. You might say, well, that was a fairly simple construction over here, a fairly simple rotation construction. Now, how can I use this in a geometry problem? So here's a classical example of this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to draw a square. So here's an example of this. Here's a square. That's going to be A, B, C, and then D. And then I'm going to draw a non-overlapping square, like this. my best job of trying to draw a square like that. There's another square. 
That's B. There's my other square, like so. Now those squares are not overlapping. I'm going to have, I'll write this as K, M, and then N down over here. And now what I'm going to do is the following. So now I'm going to connect these dots over here. So these are two non-overlapping squares. I'm going to connect the dots C and K. And I'm going to connect the dots A and N. And I'm going to let E be the midpoint over here. So E is the midpoint. Midpoint of A and N. Okay. And I'm going to draw the, uh, the altitude over here, right? Then I'm going to draw an altitude from B to CK. That's an altitude over there. I'm going to call it point F. So that's the altitude from B to CK. Now I want to show that F, B, and E are collinear. Prove that F, B, and E, F, B, and E are collinear. Great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this geometric configuration and put it into the complex plane. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that this B is the origin of the complex plane. I actually want to assume F is the origin. I want, make I want to shift everything down. So let me assume that F is the origin. So we're going to assume that F is the origin. Assume that F is the origin. If F isn't the origin, if I translate this entire problem, it doesn't change any, any issues with collinearity, right? If three points are collinear and I translate them, they're still going to be collinear, right? So in other words, collinearity is preserved by translation. So I lose nothing if I just take this configuration and the same thing with rotation. I can take this configuration and shift F up to the origin. Easy enough. I'm also going to rotate it in such a way that CK is the real axis. CK is the real axis. And that's going to make F be the imaginary axis, right? Okay, so by just rotation and translation, I can do this, right? So what does that allow me to conclude? This allows me to conclude that I can represent the point B with I times a real number B. I can represent the point C, can be represented just with a little c. And K can be represented just with a K, right? So K can be represented with just a little K, where B, C, and K are real numbers. B, C, and K are real numbers, right? Now, what is A? So now, of course, we get this beautiful, we can use our result over here. So what's A? A is going to be what we get if we rotate C by 90 degrees with B as my center, right? So what will A be? <clears throat> Excuse me. So A is represented by what point? I'm rotating C, so my, my origin is now B, so it's going to be an IB. A is IB, that's my origin. And then plus, I'm going to C, right? So it's going to be C minus IB in the direction that 90 degree rotation is multiplying by E to the I pi over 2, but E to the I pi over 2 is equal to I. What is the point over here N going to be? So N is going to be what? It's going to be the point uh, little n, and that's going to be, I'm rotating what? I'm rotating this way now, so that's going to be a negative I about B. So it's going to be IB, and then what? And then a plus, plus what? Plus um, my point K minus IB in the direction of negative I, right? Good. So now let's simplify. What is this A going to be? This A over here is going to be what? It's going to be IC, IC. And then a negative negative is a positive. So it's going to be a negative I squared is a positive one. So it's going to be a plus, plus B times I plus 1. That's what my A is over there, because negative I squared is this. Now, what will this be over here? This N is going to be what? It's going to be, I'm going to have a negative I K, negative I K, and then a what? And then the B, and then a I, and then a negative negative is a pot, I squared is a negative 1. So it's going to be an I minus 1. So that's what N and K are. So now if I add, now what is E? So E over here is going to be A plus, it's going to be the number E, of course. So E is represented by the complex number E. So E is represented by E, which is A plus N over 2. That's my midpoint formula. Now what happens when I add these things together over here? When we add these things together, I'm going to have what? I have a positive B and a negative B. The positive B and the negative B cancel out. I have an IB and then an IB. When I add those together, I'm just going to get an I times B. And when I divide by 2, I'm going to get an I times B, like that. 
And then I'm going to have a, uh, what, I'm gonna C minus K I plus I, and then C minus K over two, right? Now let's stop and think. We're done. Why so? I know that F is the origin, so F is zero. It's zero times I. B is I times B for a real number. And then what can I say about E? E is I times the quantity B plus C minus K over two. So in other words, E is purely imaginary. In other words, the real part of E is equal to zero. The real part of E is zero. And therefore that proves that E is on the complex axis. The complex axis is the axis between F and B. So those three points, F, B, and E are collinear. This gives us a very, very powerful technique by which we can prove results about collinearity by putting them into the complex plane and measuring the arguments via certain axes of rotation. Thank you very much.